This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. I read somewhere the internet that I'm over 50, still not married and my love life is a bit of a disaster. When I read that my first thought was, holy shit, who do they have on this beat? Woodward and Bernstein? They really cracked that case. My second thought was, well, I guess there's a little bit of truth to that. I mean, I am over 50, barely. I'm not married. Oh. And people seem to think I date a ton of girls. Whether that last part is true or not, I tend to play, at least on TV, the skirt-chasing character. So people assume that's who I am in real life, too. But more on that later. Oh, foreshadowing. People are, like, intrigued, going, oh, I better keep listening because there's good stuff coming up. Not the dog shit that I'm about to hear. The main difference between dating now and when I was in high school or when I was younger is that I still get clowned all the time, but not to the severity that it used to be. I literally was living in friend jail for the first 20 years of my life. Boning me was never a consideration, but I didn't know that. Now at least I can see it coming a little bit. I can see the skies a little stormier, chance of partial clowning, etc. It's like having a weather thing on your phone. Like when I was younger, there wasn't that. But now I can say, yeah, tomorrow's serious hard chance of clowning. 40% might bump up to 80 The first years of my life, I was just a, honestly a court jester. I was never the guy that girls wanted to bone. To be honest, I'm still not that guy. Girls never see me across the room and go, I have to nail this dude tonight. I need a lot of other things to fall my way for that to happen. Here's the thing. If you're not a great looking dude, which I am not, I mean, according to the internet, my parents, other people and really everyone, you at least have to be something that you can control, like interesting. But being interesting is super hard, I'm finding. You have to do interesting things. You have to be intriguing or mysterious. I'm blanking on examples. Uh, Being amusing helps. Being upbeat helps. Having a job helps. There are things you can control to make yourself attractive to the opposite sex, and there's things you can't. I had no understanding of this growing up. To this day, girls still stand me up on dates and make excuses like, Oh my God, was that tonight? I forgot. Tonight's the night I usually fuck ASAP Rocky in between sets at a concert. So in summary, tonight's bad. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that feels like that's sort of a scheduled thing, so I shouldn't. It's funny. uh, I get clowned all the time. Still, I'll be flirting with a girl, and then I'll run into her, and she'll be like with the backup quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers or something equally as cool like that. And I go, oh, you like tall, athletic, young, ripped, good-looking guys. I see. Okay, so I'm not 100% covering the basis of what you're turned on by. Okay, no, no, no. Now it's clear. You realize you were just flirting with a girl against a brick wall. You didn't even know it. Luckily, there are exceptions to the rule. For example, Marilyn Monroe went out with Arthur Miller, who was a nerdy writer. Mia Farrow married Woody Allen. It's like the lottery. Everyone has a type, and you can never figure out whose type is who unless you try. So unless you're told otherwise, just assume you have a shot. At least that's the fake confidence everyone should have. So back to the full-scale Ronald McDonald clowning I got in high school. I liked a few girls in high school, and I wasn't really a horrible-looking kid. I just had zero game. And when you have no game in high school, it's very tough, because all you're doing is telling girls that you like that you like them, which is absolutely a no-no. And you're buying them things, and you're always being there for them, and doing everything you're told you're supposed to do by your mom, which is really actually, in all reality, unfortunately, not the way to get a girl, even when you're that age. I'm not saying it's right or it even makes sense. I'm just saying that, like, psychologically, even girls at that age don't realize a sweet guy who buys them things and is always there for them is not what they want right then. It gets confusing when you're in high school because every girl says she wants a nice guy. I just want a nice guy. I would like a girl, but then she would always have a loser boyfriend, and she would want to talk to me on the phone every night because that guy's an asshole and never called her. I was a shoulder to cry on, which I was fine with. But this is a story as old as time. I was nice. I'd feed her ego. I'd tell her how pretty and charming she was. And she would always go, I wish I was going out with a guy like you instead of this fucking asshole. And in the back of my head, I'm like, well, that's an easy fix. (laughs) Get rid of him. But she never acted upon this easy fix of just dumping the loser and taking up with me starting the next morning. So I would just hang in there and hang in there and hang in there. And then one weekend, I would hear, oh, did you hear that girl broke up with that guy finally? And I'd be like, holy shit, I mean, I guess we're sort of going out now because we've talked about it so many times. And then Monday at school, I'd walk by the 100 building on the way to my locker, and I'd see her holding hands with a new guy. I was always taking for a loop thinking, wait, what just happened? 
when there's a third guy involved, then it would be the same shit all over again. She'd still call me and go, this guy's not even that great. He's not even as good as you. It was a fucking Rubik's Cube. I just go right back to kissing her ass. Literally learned nothing all four years. 